Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great uh, day on this lovely Wednesday, the second day of Iyar. Today in Israel, they commemorate Yom Hazikaron, the day of remembrance for over 23,000 soldiers that died defending the homeland, the people of Israel, the country of Israel, the land of Eretz Israel, and they also remember the 3,000, over 3,000 Nifka'i Terror, people that were not soldiers, but gave their life to terror against the people of Israel and the Jewish people. And the truth is that for those who lost a parent, a sibling, an uncle, an aunt, and how much more so for those who lost a child. They don't need Yom Hazikaron, a day of remembrance. They have a day of remembrance every single day, whether it's a yard site, whether it's a birthday, whether it's a Shabbos table where there's an empty seat and the void of not having a loved one, whether it's something unique about their loved one that they lost that brings them memories at certain times and days. For them, it's not necessary to have a Yom Hazikaron. They have that every day. But for us, us as Eretz Israel, the nation, the land of Israel, the people of Israel, we have a responsibility and we have an obligation, a sacred obligation to remember these soldiers, these holy people who gave their life defending our right to protect ourselves and not to be dependent on anyone else. And that's what we do today. Before they go on to celebrate the fact that we have a homeland, the fact that we don't have to rely on others but could defend and protect ourselves. We have paratroopers and we have navy and we have generals and lieutenants and we have people who stand up and are able to protect themselves so we don't have to rely on the kindness of others. But before we do that, we pause today to remember these heroes, to remember these people whose lives were lost defending this sacred right that we have now as a people. And today I spoke, I called my family in Eretz Israel, I called my family in Israel, my uncles, my aunts, as they went today to say Kaddish at the grave of my father's older brother who was two years older than him that died as a young man of 22 years old, never had the opportunity to find true love, to get married, to build a family, to watch his children go to school, to have grandchildren. I think of my father today who's 80. His brother would have been 82. But he passed away, Yoshua Homener, at the hand of those who hate us, protecting our holy land. I think about my grandmother, who was killed in the Independence War, who was one of the Nifkei Ateror, who was only in her 30s, when she was killed by terrorists, and we remember them. This guy once wrote to the Lubavitcher Rebbe, he lived in Eilat, and he wrote to the Rebbe that he would like to visit the gravesite of a holy tzaddik, of a holy person, as is tradition in Judaism, but there are none buried near Eilat. They're buried in T Tiberias, they're buried in Tzifat, they're buried in Jerusalem, etc., etc. And the Rebbe told him, go to the local cemetery and go to the Go to the portion where the soldiers are buried. And when you, when you see those graves of the IDF soldiers, of the soldiers who gave their life for Israel, those are holy people. Then you have visited the graves of Tzadikim. And there's a story that I always remember, one of the most beautiful favorite stories about our family, the Jewish people, and our soldiers, about the soldier who got a weekend off, a Shabbat off to go visit his family. It was a break for him, and he was hitchhiking, he was looking for a ride, 
and he had his duffel bag full of his door, dirty laundry. He was a young kid. Think about these soldiers. They're 18, they're 19, they're 20, they're 21. And he was going home to be with mom. He was going to get her to do his laundry. He was going to have a delicious meal with his parents. Life was good. He hitchhiked. He got a ride. And then when he left, he realized that he left his duffel bag full of laundry in the guy's car. And he got a message from this lovely Jew saying, you know, I apologize. I see you left your laundry in my car. You know, I take the same route on Mondays. If you want on the way back, I can meet you there and I could give you the laundry. I could give you your duffel bag so you could have it back. And he said, sure. And as he came to pick it up, he was thinking now he's gonna have to recycle his laundry again. He's gonna have to wear the dirty laundry again for the next few weeks till he goes home to his mother again. But when he got to the car, he picked up the bag and the bag was full of clean pressed iron clothing that this mother cleaned for this stranger. And on top was a note with homemade chocolate chip cookies. And the note said, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be your Ima just for today. That's our story. That's who we remember. We are one people. A people that have been in exile for 1900 years, almost 2000, and did not have the opportunity to defend ourselves, to have our own soldiers, to have our own people be protected by our own. But now we do. And while we have that, we could never forget those who make it a possibility and a reality, our soldiers, our chayalim. Today is also a special day on the Hebrew calendar. It's the second day of Iyar. Iyar, the second day of Iyar, is the Sphira to Omer, the counting of Omer of Tiferet Shebe Tiferet, which means empathy. And within empathy, empathy itself. And it's the birthday we celebrate of the fifth of the fourth, excuse me, Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Rebbe Maharash, Rebbe Shmuel. And he had a very famous quote and saying that he always said, which was, Lichat Chila Ariber. He says, the world, when they see an obstacle in their way, they try to go around it, they try to go under it, and if they can't, they jump above it. He says, I say, Lichat Chila Ariber. The moment you see an obstacle, don't try to go to the side. Don't try to go under it. Jump right over. Don't see it as an obstacle. Know that you have the strength and the power of Hashem behind you and just jump right above it. And that was the motto of the Rebbe Maharash, which the Rebbe mentioned so often when it comes to any aspect of our life. If it's study, if it's a job, if it's our relationship with God, we should always know when there's an obstacle in our way, we have the strength and we have the power to jump right above it. And the same is true of our soldiers. These are guys who never take no for an answer. You think about the independence war. You think about how many soldiers we were, how, how many soldiers the Jewish people had surrounded by so many people who hated us. But the Jewish nature and the Chayalim, the Tzahal, they didn't think to go under, to go on the side. They thought, we will jump immediately above and not see it as an obstacle, but see it as an opportunity to defend our people. And the Rebbe Marash was 48 when he passed away. He was born in 1834 in Lubavitch, which is the name of the city Love, which Chabad is named for. And he was born there and he had a very hard life. He wasn't a healthy man, but he was a master, a genius, who wrote many books, over 24 books are published about deep Hasidic philosophy that he wrote. But although he wasn't healthy, he never hesitated. He traveled around the whole Europe, looking after the Jewish community, meeting with dignitaries to enhance the lives of those Jews. And this message of L'chat Chila Riber is by no coincidence on the day when we remember the soldiers. Because the message of the Rebbe Marash, that L'chat Chila Riber, when you see an obstacle, don't go under, don't go on the side, don't hesitate, don't be intimidated. Go above it and Hashem will be with you is exactly the story and the miracle of Israel, the land of Israel, the people of Israel, and of course the soldiers of Israel. Yehei Zichram Baruch. May their memory be a blessing and may it be an impetus for us to become better human beings, to become prouder Jews, to love our country even more 
and to be proud of who we are and never to shy away from those who hate us. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.